الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله our topic will be a continuation to what I have uh, talked about last Sunday and that is about food especially today there will be some food after the halaqa and I I promise not to make the halaqa very long like last Sunday and please just raise your hand if I imams when they talk imams and teachers when they talk they just carry on talking so please just raise your hand to remind me to, to stop talking <coughs> <laughs> no, because the food will be cold um, and because the topic is about food before I forget I will just try to remind our young brothers in particular about the, the sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with regard to the etiquette um, the manners and the adab of eating in Islam so that you have the enjoyment of the food and also the barakah, the blessing of the food. If you, if you follow the advice of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Quran um, about the kuffar and food والذين كفروا يتمتعون ويأكلون كما تأكل الأنعام والنار مثوى لهم الذين كفروا the disbelievers uh, they eat and they enjoy themselves like animals and their abode or their dwelling will be the hellfire obviously animals they don't have sense of reason or sense of rationale so they don't say bismillah when they eat they don't say alhamdulillah when they finish the food maybe but we don't know because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says all the creation you said Allah but as far as Allah says in the Quran the kuffar they don't appreciate um, one of the sahaba uh, his name is uh, Umar ibn Abi Salama. He said, Kuntu Sagiran fi kana fi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi ta'am. Fakana tidi tajulu wa tasulu fi ta'am. Ma'ana al hadith, or ma'ana ma'ala al hadith al suhabi. Fakana lahu alayhi salatu wa salam. Ya ulam. سمي الله وكل بيمينك وكل مما يليك three important advices from our Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم to this young man he didn't know the adab and the etiquettes of eating and he was eating sharing the food in the presence of our Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and some sahaba so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he saw his hand moving around, not only from his side, but in different areas of the, of the ma'idah, he said to him, O young man, say bismillah when you, when you want to eat. وَكُلْ بِيَمِينِكْ Eat with your right hand. وَكُلْ مِمَّا يَلِكْ And eat from your side. Don't be selfish and greedy. Um, and this is very, very important, brothers uh, and sisters in Islam. We have to uh, follow this sunnah, this good, high manners that we should observe when we eat. Fair is to eat with your right hand and to say bismillah and um, to eat from your side. And obviously, when you finish, to say alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil um, There are many other hadith which our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the barakah of what we eat would be far less if we don't say Bismillah. Um, 
and also uh, if you eat with your left hand the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says the shaitan eats with his left hand and if you don't say Bismillah the shaitan eats with you if you don't say Bismillah the shaitan eat share the food with you just like when you enter your home if you say Bismillah tawakkaltu ala Allah and when you eat you say Bismillah our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in hadith authentic hadith that the shaitan will be very upset will be very disappointed and he will say I have no place to stay overnight in this home and I can I have no food to eat because of Bismillah and eating with your right hand <coughs> and this is why our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one day he heard one of the Sahaba towards the end of his meal saying Bismillah awwaluhu wa akhiruhu Bismillah awwaluhu wa akhiruhu in the name of Allah uh, at the beginning and at the end and the, the Prophet Sallallahu laughed and he turned to the Sahabi and he said what you have said is very good the meaning of what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said because he said to him that the shaitan vomited what he ate when you say bismillah because at the beginning this sahabi he forgot to say bismillah and then towards the end of the meal he said bismillah in the name of allah at the beginning and at the end and immediately the shaitan became sick and he vomited and that's why the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam smiled uh, or laughed uh, with this sahabi so it is very important uh, the ulama said Rabbul Bayt the guardian of the family if you are the head of the household the father or the mother when you want to eat say Bismillah loud if you have small children or new Muslims or people that they are not aware of this Sunan you have to say Bismillah loud just like if somebody sneezed and he said Alhamdulillah um, you should say loud Allah, so that he hear it and other people will, will learn from you. So this is um, just my the beginning of my my, my talk today about, about food. And I mentioned last actually some comments after the halaqa. Some brothers they said to me that your talk was not very structured. You jump from one point to another and so on and so forth. Uh, and I realized that and I, when I started talking, I said, I just want to say, to put a framework for uh, the Islamic philosophy or the Islamic approach to, to food uh, and drink. Because we are what we eat and what we drink. Um, so it is very, very important in, in our life to look at the Quran and the Sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because you will find all the principles laid down either in the Quran or in the Sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or in the books of fiqh about food. It's so important. At the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the context was uh, there, there was no supermarkets like now where everything is available take things for, for granted but at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam they they had to struggle to find food even our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam sayyida aisha radiyallahu anha she said kana yamru ash-shahr wa shahran wa la nuqidu nar fi bayt rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam one or two months passed and they didn't put the fire on to cook because there, there was nothing to to cook for, for a long, long time, uh, their nutrition is water and, and deaths. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's why one day he was, uh, he left the home, his house, uh, after Asr. 
prayer, and he met Abu Bakr as Siddiq and Umar radiallahu anhu, and he asked them, "Why, why are you out this time of the day?" They said, uh, "Hunger, O Prophet of Allah, we are very hungry. Nothing at home to eat." And he said, "Wallahi, I left the home because also I am very hungry. Nothing at home." Hada Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he said to them, "Let us go to the Ansari, so and so. He got a guard. Let us. We might be able to find some food." <coughs> So they went to this Ansari, and he was not in. But his wife was very welcoming, and she was very happy that the top three people in Medina, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and Abu Bakr and Umar, their their guests. So she welcomed them, and she said, "He he is in the farm. He will be back very soon." And before she they finished the conversation, before they sat down. The man came, and he was over the moon. He saw the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Umar and Abu Bakr. So he said he he was the best host in Medina on that day. And then when he found out that they were hungry, uh, he brought them a very fresh water, and he disappeared. And then he came back with the, with a bunch of fresh dates. Some of them ripe, and some of them still green. They put it in front of them, and then the Prophet Sallallahu saw him sharpening his knife, and he said to him, "I hope this is not your milk goat." And the man said, "No." So he slaughtered the the goat, uh, and our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Omar and Abu Bakr they had fresh water. They had they had. Uh, fresh dates and a meal where meat was. So that that was, brothers, the context when uh, we talk about food at the time of our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And when he said, for example, "ليس منا من مات شبعان وجاره جائع," in a context of poverty, severe poverty, people they are struggling to find something to eat. Nowadays. In, in the UK, I don't think you you would be worried about your your neighbour uh, in a welfare state whether they they have food overnight or not. It's not it's not an issue. And also, he said that if you make uh, soap for your family, add more water and share that with your with your neighbours. Because that was the problem at that time. Probably now the best charity. To give it to people is to smile. What about sumuka? If you watch your chika, sadaqa. If you smile to your brother, probably that every face nowadays with all the the problems of the world and with all the the stresses and people are always anxiety and, and worries and, and so on. So if somebody smiled today to you. From his heart, that is better than inviting you for a meal. <clears throat> uh, so that is just. Um, I didn't prepare to say this, but I'm just trying to say that food is very, very important in our life, and we need to appreciate and to say Bismillah when we eat, to say Alhamdulillah when we finish, um, also to. Um, Share food with people. That's also it is the advice of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. كل ما كثرت كثرت الأيدي في الطعام كل ما زالت البركة. Whenever you share your food, the more the people share food together, the more there will be baraka and blessing. Beside the social cohesion and, and brotherhood and knowing each other uh, and so on, the bonds, the social bonds between people when they share. Uh, meals, and that's why the concept of aqiqa in Islam, when a child is born, the concept of walima, when somebody gets married, udhiya uh, or dhiya after Eid after after Hajj, all these concepts they 
they uh, uh, involve food, and it is very important. Um, I mentioned to you, brothers and sisters, last Sunday about the, the general principle in Islam with regard to food, the general, the general um, and the, the basic principle is anything that is good and, and, and wholesome and beneficial and delicious and, and pleasant is and complement with the human decency and dignity is allowed in Islam to eat and drink. That is the basic philosophy in, in, in Islam. And anything that is harmful or repulsive or disgusting or harmful to the human dignity or health is either haram or makruh in Islam, whether it is food or drink. And if you look at chapter Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5 of the Holy Quran, one of the, if not one of the last chapters revealed to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Medina. And there is about 18 legislations, very, very important legislations in chapter Al-Ma'idah. Even the Ma'idah means table. The table also about food. Um, so Al chapter Al-Ma'idah, from verse 3 until verse 3 verses, 3, 4, and 5, most of these verses about food, about ta'am. يَسْأَلُونَكَ مَا دَا أُحِلَّ لَهُمْ قُلْ أُحِلَّ لَهُمْ الطَّيِّبَاتِ They ask you what is permissible or what is lawful for us, for you, say, أُحِلَّ لَكُمْ الطَّيِّبَاتِ طَيِّبَات, things which are beneficial and, and nice and pleasant, and so on and so forth, they are uh, allowed in, in Islam to be consumed by by the human by the human being. This day, الطيبات are made lawful for you. And the ayah which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned about what is haram. This very ayah, the end of the ayah, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا. To show you the importance of chapter Al-Ma'idah, that means Islam is completed and perfected and chosen as religion for mankind, and that's why the scholar said the chapter Al-Ma'idah, the, the rules and the ahkams and the rulings in chapter Al-Ma'idah, they are not abrogated because the, it is the last chapter revealed to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So At-Tayyibat, brothers and sisters, uh, what Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala uh, allowed for the human being to eat. Because in chapter Al-Baqarah, there are two verses. The first one about Allah addressing all mankind, Ya Ayuhan Nas, Kulu ma fil ardi halalan tayyiba. All mankind, Allah addressed them to eat whatever available on this dining table of the earth, what is halal, that means lawful and tayyib. Because something could be halal but not tayyib. I remember I bought, this is two years ago, I bought some, in a very, very hot summer day, I bought some chickens. They were cut very nicely, uh, packed very nicely. I took them home and I put them in the kitchen. And after a while, my daughter said, oh, my dad, I, I smell very bad smell in the kitchen. Oh, so I went and I checked, and the chickens were rotten. So they are halal, from halal shop, but they are not tayyib. Just like if you have uh, an animal, a deceased animal, it is yours. Uh, it is in the category of what we are allowed to eat, but if it is ill, Though it is halal, the way you have this animal, but it is, it is not uh, uh, because it is an animal which is ill. <coughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters, in chapter Al-Baqarah and in chapter Al-Ma'idah, uh, he laid down the foundations 
of, of, of the halal and haram. And the haram in the Quran, both in chapter Al-Baqarah and chapter Al-Ma'idah, or Al-Mayyitah, the dead animals, uh, the blood, the flowing blood, the blood of animals, the swine, the flesh of the swine, or any animal that is slaughtered, uh, and a name other than the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pronounced over the animal. This is, these are the four haram things mentioned in the Quran. And then in chapter Al-Ma'idah, which was revealed, as I said, one of the last chapters revealed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave more details about Al-Mayyitah. حرمت عليكم الميتة والدم ولحم الخنزير وما أهل لغير الله به then he said والمنخنقة والموقوذة والمتردية والنطيحة وما أكل السبع إلا ما ذكيتم وما ذبح على النصب so in this in this آية in chapter Al-Ma'idah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the details of the animals, the dead animal, and the way the animal died. For example, Al-Munkhaniqa, the animal that is strangled, strangulation, the death, the cause of death, to strangle the animal in its neck until it dies. al mawquza is the animal that is beaten to death by a stick or something else. And mutaradiyah, the animal that falls from a very high place. And natiha, when two animals fight by the horns or their heads and one kills the other. وَمَا أَكَلَ السَّبَعْ Any beast or predator ate an animal, a part of the animal, and you found most of the rest of the animal there. So, and then وَمَا ذُبِحَ عَلَى النُّصُبْ The animals that are uh, slaughtered before the idols. Ten categories, or ten uh, things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in chapter Al-Ma'idah. Uh, and the ulama said, these are just giving the details. These are, are not allowed to be eaten in. So the only animal that was mentioned as haram in the Holy Quran is al-khinzir. Obviously, the khinzir, um, the meat of the khinzir, the, the, also the, the fats, all the fluids and the blood, and also the skin of the, of the khinzir. The skin, people talk about if it is tanned or not, uh, could be clean and pure or not. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in hadith, authentic hadith, uh, he, he said, Naha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an akli kulli dhi nab min al-siba' wa kulli dhi mikhlab min al -dayr. Naha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prohibited uh, all animals, canine animals uh, or beasts uh, to be consumed by the human being and all uh, birds with tannins, the birds that they use their mikhlabs to hunt uh, and restrain their prey and also the beasts, when they, uh, they have very, very strong canine teeth, they can overpower other animals, they restrain them, they kill them, they eat them. So these beasts are haram for the, the human consumption based on the hadith of our Prophet Muhammad Now, 
there are so many opinions among the imams and the scholars and the Sahaba about the interpretation of this of this uh, ahadith. The ahadith are authentic, and we know that as Sunnah and Masr al-Thani li tashri'a the Sunnah of the Prophet is the second source of Sharia after the Holy Quran. But the understanding of the text, you have to be qualified. I had a prisoner who had a very, very extreme attitude to non-believers. Because he read chapter of Tawbah, and out of the context, he came to conclusions about jihad and how we deal with the kuffar and the mushrikun in a very, very extreme way. And then I explained to him the, the text and the context, the historical context that you have to, to look at before you could apply or understand this text. And you have to be qualified to, learn, to, to be that. And one of the qualifications is to, to understand the, the Quran in Arabic. And he was a convert, so he doesn't understand the Quran in, in, in the Arabic language. So, so Abdullah ibn Abbas, brothers, the madhab of Abdullah ibn Abbas, and also Imam Malik agreed with him that he said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Holy Quran and he sent our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَمَا أَحَلَّهُ اللَّهُ فَهُوَ حَلَالُ وَمَا حَرَّمَهُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلُ فَهُوَ حَرَامُ وَمَا سَكَتَ عَنْهُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فَهُوَ مُبَاحُ this is the meaning of what Abdullah ibn Abbas said when he looked at the hadith of our Prophet ﷺ regarding predators. Because he, he, he only believed his understanding only the four categories of things that mentioned in chapter Al-Ma'idah and chapter Al-Baqarah are haram. Because these are mentioned in the Holy Quran. What Allah kept silent about is, is allowed and permissible. And this view also Abu Darda, Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha, she also has some views about other kinds of animals. And Al Imam Malik radiallahu anha. So Al Imam Malik, he said, predators, whether uh, canine animals or birds of prey, they are makruh, they are not haram. And this is the view of Abdullah ibn Abbas as well. And if you look at these brothers, and then you try to implement this, obviously in the UK, we don't have predators, we don't hunt, we don't, but you need just to, to understand the theory that uh, mentioned by our, about these, about these things. Um, Al Imam Al Shafi'i, Al Imam Abu Hanifa, Rahimahullah, he said that all uh, animals with canine teeth or talons which uh, can kill and eat other animals are haram for the human consumption. This is Imam Abu Hanifa. And Imam al-Shafi'i, Rahimahullah, he says that only predators which kill and eat animals and human beings, like lions, for example, uh, wolf, um, and other uh, cheetah, for example, uh, leopards, animals which can overpower human beings and eat them, these are the haram ones. But the others which kill other animals, but they cannot kill a human being, in the, the view of Imam al-Shafi'i, they are they are, they are, uh, they are makruh, they are not haram. So, it's now half past two, and this topic is really very, very complex, and you need to, to learn about uh, animals with four legs and bears of prey, which is allowed and what is not allowed. If I, if I asked you about, about when we had about three months ago, that processed meat contaminated with horse meat, either deliberately 
or, or by mistake. What is, what is the Islamic view of eating horses? I forgot, brothers, before I... Another hadith from our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about animals also, he prohibited eating al-humur, uh, al-ahliya, the domesticated donkeys. They are not allowed to, to be eaten. Uh, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the day of Khaybar, he prohibited eating the uh, the donkeys, domesticated donkeys, but he allowed, according to hadith by Jabir bin Abdullah, hadith sahih, that he allowed the Sahaba to eat uh, horse meat. And also Asma, the daughter of Abu Bakr, also she said, we ate uh, a horse, horse meat in Medina at the time of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa so if you look at the, the views of the, of, the, of the Imams, you will find that they have different views about, about, about horse meat, about even hyena, for example, which is also a predator. The scholars, some scholars, they said at the time of our Prophet ﷺ, they used to, the Arabs, they used to like eating hyena. And they used to buy and sell them between al Safa and al Marwa, hyenas. Because they said they don't have teeth as such, they have one bone uh, at the bottom and one at the top. I haven't seen hyenas, I don't know whether you come across a hyena or not. But some scholars, they said it is allowed to eat, some scholars, they said it is not allowed to eat. Elephants, one of the largest uh, canine teeth in the elephant. Are we allowed to eat elephants or not? Also you'll find different opinions within Islam. Monkeys. Many times in these documentaries in the BBC you see we the Africans, we eat donkeys. I haven't eaten any, but it is in some uh, rainforest areas people eat on, uh, donkeys. Are we allowed to? Sorry, monkeys. Are we allowed to eat them or not? You need to look at the are these things. Foxes, are we allowed to? You know, for example, the scholar said about a bob, the lizard. Some scholars said it's one of the most delicious meat that the Arabs they like to eat. But one day the Prophet ﷺ was invited by Maymuna bint al Harith. He went with Khalid bin al Walid and she grilled for them a lizard, a large one, a desert one, and she brought it to them. And it was the Prophet ﷺ, he never criticized meat, uh, food, when he presented to him. Not like us, we always complain about too salty or too this and too that. The Prophet ﷺ never complains. Either he likes something and he eats, or he doesn't like it and he says, Alhamdulillah. But if he, is not, if he is not sure what is provided to him, he asks. So he asked when this meat of the lizard was presented to him, uh, he asked, what is this? And they said, this is the lizard. So he just pulled back and he said, we in Medina, we, we don't eat it. I'm sorry. So the Prophet ﷺ, he did not eat. Khalid bin al-Walid, he said, I pulled the whole thing and I, I finished it. So it is, it, is, it is up to the individual. There are so many things in, in our life <laughs> regarding food. It is, it, is, it is up to you. I mean, the British, they make jokes about the French that they eat frogs. Are we allowed to eat frogs in Islam? We are allowed to eat them. We are allowed to eat frogs if you, if you feel comfortable with eating frogs, because not haram in Islam. Some, some scholars said makroo, al-fa'ar, rats. Also, they are not haram in Islam. According to Imam Malik, khashash al-ard is not haram. And he said that the snake, as long as you slaughter the snake, it's fine, you can eat it. Avoid the poison area in the head, but you are allowed to. So there are so many uh, interesting things about, about food brothers and, and sisters. Obviously, the drinks is, are very clear. Uh, if they are fer fermented and they became intoxicant, then they are haram. But also, there is very interesting uh, 
فيو اهل الراي والاحناف ريغاردين النبيذ يو نيد تو لوك ات ات وات وات ديد دي سي اباوت كوت بروس صلى الله عليه وسلم سيد ما اسكر كثيره فقليله حرام بت سم اذر سكولرز اف ذا نبيذ نوت فروم العنب نوت فروم غريبس they have other opinions as well so i pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to follow the sunnah and the quran in our food in our drink sallallahu alayhi wa sallam muhammad wa ala alihi wa sorry also the talk is quite long any any question because there is some food and i have been asked to bring the food so if there is no question i will go and bring the food Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. When, when we consume uh, manufactured food like chocolate, uh, candies, uh, when we look into the ingredients, sometimes they have code like EA to one or something. And do you know which uh, code actually haram means that we have us probably ourselves? Um. Because they are translated the ingredients into code, you know? Yeah. Maybe if you ask, ask about man after the... I, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not aware. Anybody aware yes. of the codes? Yes. Yes, brother. You can check online. There's a few codes coming from the from an insect, especially the red color, and that's what's haram. So you need to check online and do a search and you'll find which these are, are the haram ones. It's very, <coughs> you know, when it comes to the ingredients, it is also a very interesting area. I remember Sheikh Darsh, rahimahullah, and some other scholars say sometimes you'll find um, bacon flavor, bacon flavor, but they said it is chemical, it's not nothing to do with pork, it is a chemical. Most of these flavors they are chemicals, they are plant based or chemicals rather than when you say bacon that means it is something a derivative from, from pork. But as the brother said, maybe if you look at the internet you will be able to find these uh, codes and what they represent. Yes, brother. Yeah, there, there are secrets, for example, that they sell in shops <coughs> up at uni and, and in town as well. Um, they are fish or, um, or, yeah, I think fish flavored. And they are actually sold as vegetarian, yeah, because it, there is no fish in, mm. in, in, in the crisps as such or, or, in, the, or in the flavors. It's, it's pure chemical, yeah. Mm. So it's suitable for vegetarian, for example, although it's fish. Yeah. It's a bit intriguing. So please, yes please. Um, there's these crisps called bacon rashers and they're the flavor of bacon but they're suitable for vegetarians. Oh, I see. Um, Very good. I don't really know what, um, what, like, should I get them or not? Yeah, if it is suitable for vegetarians, that means there is nothing from animals, so we are allowed to eat any vegetarian food. If it is vegetarian. And also ask your dad. <laughs> <laughs> What's the point? Isn't it? Yes, brother. If you are in a survival position, are you allowed to eat any of these meats that are haram? All the verses about haram food and drink. Allah concluded the verses by only فمن الطرة غير باغ ولا عاد فلا إثم عليه. If you have been compelled without transgression or extravagance, then there is no blame. If you read, I can give you the translation of Al Halal al Haram, Sheikh Al Qaradawi, mashallah. There is a very, very good uh, article about Al Darura, Allati Tibiyah Al Mahzub, the necessities that compel you to, to consume something which is, uh, which is not allowed <coughs> in Islam. For example, medicine. If you go to the GP and he prescribes for you a medicine, that is from haram source. So the scholar said, unless your, your, your illness is life-threatening life and there is no other alternative, then you should not use the but if there is an alternative or the illness, if you have a flu, I remember I went to Boots many years ago to buy some, I had a cold or a flu, 
and the medicine that a liquid to drink, they said if you drink it, you should not drive a car. So alcoholic, that if you drive, you might be in a state of uh, uh, intoxication. So why should I use it for something that is not going to kill me? So we have to, you have to ask Ahlul Ikhtasas to know whether you should use these things or not and what are the circumstances. Yes, brother. Uh, in Britain, we're still having the problem where slaughtering the animals uh, properly in the name of Allah is not correct at the moment, where people are being, the animals are being stunned for the animals being slaughtered. One or three animals die of that, of that stun itself. So how do we go about doing that? How do we go about correcting that? Actually, I tried, we need to, in our context, as Muslims living in the UK, we need to study uh, the meat of the people of the book in details, the Islamic views about it, and also uh, the way they slaughter, the way they process the meat, um, the, the stunning of the animals or the electric shock of the animals, all these are very important issues which have been fully researched by Muslim scholars and people in this field and they have views about it. Yani, there is a magister Islami uh, headed by Sheikh Qaradawi. They made a lot of research about, about, uh, about this area. And probably if you look at the Islam online, you will find uh, the advice to Muslims in the West. Because I don't want to take the time going into the details about this. But regarding Bismillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَكُلُوا مِمَّا ذُكِرَ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ In another verse, وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا لَمْ يُذْكَرَ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ And also our Prophet, sorry, the Rahman always say, I don't translate, don't eat any meat that is the name of Allah, is not pronounced over it. You should not eat it. But there are a hadith from our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also, the Imams, Imam Abu Hanifa, Rahimahullah, if you forgot to say Bismillah, or intentionally you, haven't, you don't say Bismillah, you are, it is haram to eat that animal which you slaughtered. This is Imam Abu Hanifa. Um, and Imam Shafi'i, Rahimahullah, whether you forgot or intentionally you haven't said Bismillah, you are allowed to consume. Imam Malik, if you forgot, you are allowed to consume, but if you intentionally, then you should not consume that. So that within Islam, there are uh, a shade of, of opinions about, about the name of Allah. But there are a hadith, uh, Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha, uh, she said, people who had hadith ahd fil jahiliyyah, this is in Bukhari, they asked our Prophet sallallahu that these people, they supply us with some meat, and we don't know whether they pronounce the name of Allah or what, 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 when they, whether they say Bismillah or not. And the Prophet sallallahu said, Samullah wa kulu, say Bismillah and eat. Even in that. So, yeah, so the, some scholars said, you don't have to say Bismillah when you slaughter, but say it when you, when you eat. And also the Prophet sallallahu said in hadith, that whenever the Muslim is slaughter, the name of Allah in his heart. So, so the meat of the people of the book is a, is a different topic and that needs really to, to address it, the whole issue maybe in another, another Sunday, inshallah. So please don't leave the, the hole. Sorry sisters, I'm so sorry, I haven't, because we are not allowed to look to the sisters, that's why I'm always looking that way, sorry. We are allowed to eat crocodiles and reptiles, we are allowed to eat them as well. And uh, uh, the other one was uh, sea animals. I'm not sure, but I was told maybe crows, um, like lobsters and crabs. 
all sea animals are halal, lawful, based on the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who are ahuru ma ahu all marine animals are halal, as long as they are not harmful. All marine animals are, are halal. So, crocodiles, obviously, they are amphibians, they live in the water, they live outside. That's why some scholars said we should slaughter them. I know in Africa they, they have farms of crocodiles and uh, the, the meat is very, very delicious. So if you, yeah, if you, if you want to eat it, there's no problem, shall I? So, Abdurrahman, shall I go and bring the food or you go?